Oh, hi. You guys are probably wondering why it took me this long to put this up on the channel. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, it is I, Seto, some of the Fanatic, back at you with an update from my favorite deck of all time, the White Dragon God itself. So, what's new? Well, one, we finally have Christian Halka Fibrix now. Two, Master Rule 5, even though it should technically be 4.1, but whatever. Uh, so now we can just summon Ixxyz monsters into the main monster zones. And Synchro monsters. And fusions. There are no fusions in this deck, unfortunately. But I felt like the rank 8 aspect was the best way to use Blue Eyes right now. Especially since I don't have some of the other cards. I'm not running any of the Guard Dragons in this either. But uh, let's get into what I am running. Starting off with the uh, minuscule Blue Eyes engine. Or a very small portion of the engine of destruction as I like to call it. We have three Blue Eyes White Dragons. All anniversary art. <sighs> My favorite card, the Firekeeper, literally right next to the camera, got me my third undamaged copy of this card, and I cherish all three of these copies, and it's my favorite one to run. It's also my most expensive copy that I own. Next up, one alternative dragon. Yeah, you're seeing that right, only one. Uh, I feel like in this version of the deck, it's a, it's a more combo-heavy Blue Eyes build, I guess you could say. Uh, more centered around rank eights and stuff. But in the combo heavy version, I feel like alternative is kind of dead at multiples. Uh, next up to finish up the engine of destruction in the monster lineup, we have two white stone of legends and two white stone of agents. So, uh, yeah, the, I mean, I shouldn't really have to explain any of these guys. This is like what the 12th blue eyes deck profile on this channel now, including the chaos max variants and the fusion variants. Whitestone searches your blue eyes. This special summons them from the deck and can get them back from the graveyard. Special summons them during the end phase, which is only this one. That's it. Those are all the blue eyes monsters we're running. We're not running Dragon Spirit. We're not running Chaos Max. We're not running Solid Dragon or any of the others. Not even any of the Sages or the Maidens. I was originally trying that, but for whatever reason, it just seemed too slow and not fast enough. Let's get into the uh, more powerful Dragon engine of the deck. Two Chaos Dragon Levy and Air. Mmm, that alt art. This art is so beautiful. Uh, for those who don't know what this card does, you've clearly been living under a rock, but I'll explain it anyways. Uh, so he's banished. He's summoned from your hand by banishing three light or dark monsters. And depending on the attributes of the monsters you banish and the numbers of them, he gets different effects. Three lights, you special summon a monster from the graveyard. Three darks, you rob your opponent of a card in their hand. And combination of the two, you destroy up to two cards on the field. Pretty self-explanatory. He can't attack during the turns you activate the effect. Uh, 3,000, zero defense. He's got 3,000 plus attack, less than 2,500 attack. Uh, defense, excuse me. He's a melody target. Yes, you're going to see Melody of Awakening Dragon. You're, we'll get into that in a few moments. Another melody target, and one of my personal tech choices that I love, Diabolos. Darkest Diabolos, Lord of the Lair. I love this guy so much. He's a melody target again, 3,000, less than 25. Uh, he can't be targeted or tributed. So he's literally kaiju proof. Or tributed by an opponent's effect, anyway. Uh, so his first effect is if a dark monster you control is tributed, you can just special summon him from the hand if it was there or the graveyard, even if not. And his other effect is he can tribute a dark monster you control to, again, rob a card out of your opponent's hand. He's a level 8 dragon monster. That comes into play. Alright. That's uh, pretty much the chaos engine for the rest of the melody targets for the deck. Next up, two copies of... I'm going to be 100% honest. I have no idea why no one else is running this card. This card is so good. Uh, so... Starly Safer, he actually was, probably still is expensive in some spots because he's a bit of a secret rare. I have three, but I, man, I opted to only run two because you don't want to run too many of him, but you want to have a good chance of seeing him. Uh, 
He basically is another dragon recursion for level 8 dragons in the graveyard, and you can send any number of dragons you control or in your hand to the graveyard, and then search for a new dragon and monster with the same level as the levels of the monsters you sent. Normally you're going to be looking for Nebula Dragon. What I don't understand is why I see people running this, but not this. You literally use this to search this. I, it, it makes no sense to me what's- and besides, if you have it, you can never use the second effect of Nebula Dragon, which lets you put a level 4 Dragon monster back in your hand. Uh, Nebula Dragon is kind of both a blessing and a curse. Because if you remember, I believe the last Blue Lies deck profile we touched on Nebula Dragon. Uh, Nebula Dragon basically shows itself and another level 8 Dragon in your hand and summons them both in defense position. However, for the rest of the turn, you can't summon anything except light or dark Dragon monsters. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, again, both a blessing and a curse, because you can't just summon any old rank 8. Uh, for the last part of the Safert engine, we have one Galactic Spiral Dragon. This is probably a mistake, I should probably be running two, but I don't really have the room. Plus, the one seems to do itself just fine. If it gets DD Crowed, it, it, it sucks. But DD Crow kind of hurts this deck anyways. But So Spiral Dragon is a uh, level 8 monster, which is arguably one of your best things to discard for trade in or Melody of the Awakening Dragon. Please, Konami, make these cards hollow. I would love to see them shiny. Uh, Spiral Dragon can summon itself from either the hand or graveyard if you control two or more light and dark dragon monsters. It has another effect as well, which lets you change the level of all monsters you control to 8. Yes, I did not misread that. That is any monsters. So if you have, say, oh, I don't know, let's say you have, I'm not running it, but let's say you have, I don't know, a righty driver on the field that's somehow still on the field, and then you summon it and you activate its effect, and you have four monsters on the field, all four of the monsters on the field become level eight, and you can make two XCs from there. And that's the rest of the safer package. <clears throat> Next up is my personal tech that I love to death. The card that represents Andrew, the cameraman. So, I've liked this guy back in the day. You may remember when I did the first Guard Dragon Blue Eyes combo, I used, this is one of the things with the White Stone of Legend in order to get Ib on the field. Unfortunately, Ib is now gone. But that being said, this plus any of the White Stones is a Halka Fibrix. And you just go into Halka Fibrix from there. So it's a two card combo. Oh, and it's a level four dragon. So if you have to, you can always just Seifert, send itself and get a white rose dragon. And if you have the ways to make Halka Fibrix on the field, you can. You can special itself from the hand if you have a dragon or plant type tuner. Um, we never use the second effect because we don't run any plants. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> And then next we have one copy of a card that everyone is saying should be banned. I understand it, but you guys are fucking stupid. You don't ban this. This card was around for five years plus. It wasn't a problem back then. The only reason it's a problem now is because of Halka Fibrix and all that enables. Now I'm not saying Halka Fibrix should be banned. Quite the opposite. I love Halka Fibrix. It makes this deck a lot more powerful. I think the Mecha Phantom Beast Link should be banned because it's a goddamn token generator. How many times do Konami have to learn the lesson? No, no token generator cards. Doesn't matter if you're only locked into not Link summoning for the rest of the turn. That's three token bodies that you can summon a bunch of synchros with. So, yeah. Jet Synchron, this thing is great. It basically turns Halka Fibrix into a Boral Sword or any Link 4 that you like. It would be absolutive if I had one. Dinkleberg! Sorry, had to make that reference. But yeah, this is Jet Synchron. Konami, please don't ban this card. Ban the stupid Phantom Beast Link instead. Next up, into the spells. Three, excuse me, two, the Melody of Awakening Dragon, because we don't have as many of the targets in this deck, and it's not in completely centralized of our Melody. It's Lord of D playing a Blue Eyes guitar. Search. Two dragons with 3,000 or more attack, 2,500 or less. Every single one in here is a melody target. And after Eternity Code comes out, I'm going to have a new version of this deck with a new melody target that I am super hyped for that I have not seen anybody else playing in a Blue Eyes deck. It's going to require me to go back to the Lux Sacking Dangers, but in my opinion, should hopefully be worth it. Uh, next up, 
three trade-ins. The amount of level eights we have in this deck is staggering. Uh, it's your hand fixer, discard level eight, draw two cards. Uh, two Dragon Ravine. Yeah, this is a card that most people normally run only one of. I opt to run two, because I always have the shit luck of drawing into my one copy that I don't want to draw. So I always run the two, and usually that works out great. You can normally just search this card out with the Dragoonity link, but again, most people run one. I like running two because I always wind up drawing the stupid thing. Oh, and you can use multiples of it once per turn. Uh, I, I believe it's just a soft once per turn clause. Uh, you never learn use the search for Dragoonity effect, but you will use the send a dragon monster to your deck effect a lot. Again, it's a hand fixer. One dragon shrine, one foolish burial, one monster reborn to start off the revival cards because we can have nice things finally. Two return of the dragon lords. And two, this card. Yeah, it's been a while since you've seen this one in this deck. And quite honestly, I'm surprised I ever cut it. Because it's actually surprisingly still really good. Unfortunately, we can't search it anymore because Ib is banned. Rest in peace. If I can't have Deng Long, I can't have you, I guess. But Special Summons a level 4 Allura Dragon. I wonder what level 4 dragon I'm going to summon with this. <laughs> Sorry if I'm sounding a little annoying. I'm just... Uh, the heat and everything else is getting to me. And this deck is my pride. It's my power. But yeah, uh, you can also move dragons to different zones as well. This can happen with some of the links where you want to do that. Three big on Demon Child, because we hate Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. And three, I finally have the ultras of these bastards. <laughs> so, almost everything is an ultra rare, except the uh, War Return of the Dragon Lords, because they're only in secret. The Shrine, because it's only in secret. The Ravine, because it's not an ultra rare. The Jet Synchron, because it's only freaking super common. The White Stones, because they're only freaking secret or super uh these aren't hollow at all but oh gosh as some of you may remember my dream for this deck is every single card in this deck is ultra rare unfortunately that dream still has yet to be realized because they fucked up the legendary collection kaiba we're gonna have a video on that coming up soon uh but yeah that's the main deck for blue eyes 40 cards uh there's no guard dragons in the extra deck i'm just gonna come out and say that we got my field center for Kaiba. Goes with the mat. All right, for the extra deck, one blue eyes spirit dragon, one Azure eyes silver dragon, one black rose moonlit dragon, standard synchro package for blue eyes, and one crystal wing as well, because it turns out with jet synchron, you can actually go into crystal wing easy, because you just make a uh, blue eyes spirit dragon, and then just tag out for moonlight, Bring back the Jet Synchron, make a Crystal Wing. Mm, good stuff. Only four Synchros that we run in the deck. Uh, arguably, you could take these out and put in a Pisty and an LP and an Ultimate Zulkin as well. And then you just use Zulkin to just summon out the Crystal Wing. I opted to go with the Blue Eyes Synchros because I felt the God Dragon combo was a little too heavy, heavy weak to Nibiru. And I wanted to focus on the Ixi summoning aspect of this deck. This deck is a rank 8 centric deck. The goal is to make this guy. You remember him? He is so much better now with fucking Master Rule 5. Oh, take any two number dragon mon- Oh, yeah, can't be targeted. Uh, take any two number dragon monsters from your extra deck or graveyard. Summon the first, attach the second to it as a material. You can't special summon any of your monsters that turn, but uh, yeah, and I can see I can see I can see Kaylee wincing in the back because she knows what I do with this card. Uh, we had a blue eyes and red eyes mirror match. Uh, last build of blue eyes, she actually beat me. Uh, this build, unfortunately, the favor was returned. I'm sorry. I, st I still love you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, first one. This is the main one you're probably going to be summoning the most. Number 100, Numeron Dragon. Master Rule 5, this guy is disgusting. 
You can get them up to 17,000 plus, depending on what Ixies monsters are on the field. It's stupid. Arguably the best rank eight in the game, Hope Harbinger. Negate spells, redirect attacks. Oh, if you're Ixies monster, you can now probably take that third effect as well, which nobody uses, which is whenever an Ixies monster dies, it gains the attack of the Ixies monster. All right, next up, the real spice and a card that I got turned on to. I don't remember which Blue Eyes deck profile it was, but somebody mentioned this card and I thought about it and I'm like, yeah, this is perfect. Why haven't I been playing this card? Well, the obvious answer is I didn't have it. Now I do. Yeah, you're seeing that right. That's number 92, Heart Earth Dragon. Uh, why is this on here? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's a zero attack. Uh, oh, well, that's a, let's get first off to the key thing. It's a number dragon monster. And it sees. Uh, second, it's got, you notice it's got zero attack and defense. Uh, and if it ever attacks a monster, it can't be destroyed by battle. And your opponent takes all the damage from it. I was going to try a combo with double-edged sword, but I decided not, nah, not consistent enough. Uh, but the mean thing about this card, and the thing that really helped me in my duel against Kaylee, is that last effect. If you go first and you can make a rate 8, you make this and this. If they don't have a lightning storm or an impermanence or any kind of effect negation, you watch them squirm during the end phase if they dare to set anything. Because what number 92 Heart Earth Dragon does is during the end phase, you can detach a material from it and then banish every single card that your opponent normal summoned or set that turn. Yes, that includes spell and trap cards. Second time I pulled it off, I was like, you forgot, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this thing is so... It, it's really cool. It's a really cool card, and I didn't think of it because it wasn't a rank 8. But it's a really good card with this. And there's also that effect where if it dies, you can bring it back, and then it gets a 1,000 attack for each banished card. But that's probably never going to come up. I believe it's every banished card. Let me just double-check that real quick. Uh, especially when this card from the game, for each card currently banished. Yeah. So, um, say you wanted to run Pot of Desires, or if your opponent runs Pot of Desires and they destroy this... Bring it back, this is a 10,000 attack card. It's sick. And one 107 Galaxy Ice Tachyon Dragon. I wanted to run 46. I didn't have the room. But Tachyon Dragon, more often than not, winds up becoming the Xyz material that you attach with Dragoobian, but it's still, it's still a pretty good card itself. I mean, it's a 3,000 body that during the battle phase, you detach the material and then it negates every other card on the field. Uh, very important to note, it negates every card, including yours. Uh, but then, if an effect is activated, it gains a thousand and it gains a second attack. It's it, it's Tachyon Dragon. What more can you say about it? It's a powerful, powerful rank eight. Normally, you're using it as material, but oftentimes you'll either make 97 and this and pass, or 97 and this and pass. Or if you're lucky enough, you'll make all three of them. <laughs> And then you, you just watch your opponent squirm like, what can I do? I didn't open the Nibiru. Oh! So that's the five Ixies for the 97 package. For Lynx, we've got Soda Use Skull Dread because it's a dragon monster and I really like it because you can do a bunch of stuff with it. I'll be honest, this would probably be an Appaloose if I had it. I don't. So I'm going for Skull Dread. Just speaking of which, Konami, why is this card not limited in real life? I mean, I understand mo a lot of the generic combo decks aren't really running it right now because Nibiru, but multiple Skull Dreads in one turn is something that should not exist. Limit it like you have in Legacy of the Duelist. Uh, one card Borosaur Dragon, because this card single-handedly just wins games. But I've heard a couple of people want it banned. I'm just like, eh, no. I mean, you got Xcode Talker coming out soon now, which basically does almost the same thing. Uh, and it's... Uh, Effects that can't be responded to can be used offensively or defensively. So it's still a really good card. So if you're locked into light and dark dragons, you can still summon this card going first. And you have a sword for a shield. Uh, one Dragoon be Romulus and Heavenly Spheres for the Dragon XC's targets. One Christian Halkafibrix. Yes, that's how you pronounce its name. It has a name. Stop calling it Needle Fiber. 
It has a printed name now. Call it what it's supposed to be called. Needle fiber was never official. Its official Japanese name was Christian Hadi Fiber. It was never called needle fiber, not in Japan, not anywhere, except for idiots on the internet. Rant done. Moving on. This card is broken. It probably should never have been printed. Oh, any two monsters, including a tuner, special summon a tuner from the deck. Uh, you can banish it to summon a synchro monster or synchro tuner from your extra deck. If you notice, I'm not running any of those, unfortunately. If I would, I would probably run either Shooting Riser Dragon or um, uh, uh, one, uh, Wonder Magician, the Tech Genius card. Because I love that card. It's a really cool card. And finally, to round off the extra deck, we have one Link Revo. Or as I like to call him, Curry Curry, motherfucker! Alright, so that's it. That's Blue Eyes. That's the latest version of Blue Eyes with Rank 8 centric spam during Master Rule 5. This deck is still fun to play. And I'm really looking forward for that new card coming out in the next set because it's trying to infecting Melody Target. I know it's got a different name. I know. You can roast me in the comments for that after my whole thing about Halka Fibrix. I know. It's called Arch Nemesis Ashatos. That's the card I'm talking about. Google it. You'll find out I'm right. So, like, comment, subscribe. Stay safe. And don't be a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck.